Yeah, head through the day. Uh, Vincent Wilton starts us off. What's up, Vince? Hey, Mike, how are you? Good, what's up? Uh, I just wanted to ask you, you're referring to Kennedy. Uh, I, I, I hope you remember. Do you remember anybody in your lifetime that was more at ease in command of the room and a better sense of humor in a press conference than he was? Well, I only uh, saw him on on video. You know, I mean, I I, I mean, I, you know, I I was too young to even see him on television. And yeah, in those was, days, was TV a, was you know was a little different anyway. I was I, I was I was in eighth grade, and he, he he had such a command of the room. He could make people laugh, and I know other yeah, many very, subjects I mean, weren't covered, very, but he was he was a he was a special. A special person in that regard. I mean, he, he, liked, being able to... he liked the media. He liked the press. He liked writers. He wanted to be a writer. Uh, he thought about being a newspaper editor. That he, he thought for a long time that that's what he would do, would be buy a newspaper. Remember, he didn't think he would go into politics when he was in college. Uh, until Joe died, he thought that was Joe's business. It was not his business until Joe perished in the war, uh, because Joe was, I'm going to be president, I'm going to be president, uh, and JFK was looking for a different line of work. He liked writing, he liked traveling, he liked the idea of being a foreign correspondent, that's why he was so at ease, and why he was so friendly with Ben Bradley, as an example, uh, because he kind of had a lot of the same likes as Ben Bradley, uh, of which one was also women, uh, but, uh, I mean, that's, that's a big part of it, too, but uh, they, you know, they, they hit it off. Uh, from that standpoint, but he uh, he he liked the media, but he was also very thin-skinned. So that's another thing. He did not like criticism. But hey, you know that's not doesn't make him unusual. Kevin in Long Island, what's up, Kevin? Hey, Mike. I wanted to talk about uh, McNown, uh, but uh, first, Ari in Brooklyn, what's up, Ari? Hey, what's up, Mike? How you doing? What's happening? Um, yeah, I just want to talk about the Giants for a second. Um, you know, I don't think you're wrong that if they put it in the letter, you know, it's not going to get better. But I'd rather see them at least stink with, at least giving the, you know, the rookie a chance and stink with Eli. You know, the okay. next couple of games versus San Francisco and the Buccaneers, don't you think that's a good time to put in, you know, the rookie no. quarterback, see what he's got versus bad defenses? No, I think the idea is to try and still win the games when you still have eight left to try to win them all. Yeah, when well, you haven't I mean, won as... them, when you haven't won them and you get down to two or three more games, or whatever it is, then you can make a change. Go ahead. Are you saying that from a coach's perspective or a fan's Both. perspective? Both. I mean, yeah, listen, well, I mean, listen, the, the, Mike, the, 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 there is no fan's perspective. The, the, yeah, well, I'm uh, saying, Mike. Yeah. Just, well, wait a second. What, we, what we, is your we know the Giants aren't turning What is table? your perspective? To lose all the games? My, no, not at all. But let, let's see what we've got in the back of quarterback at least. Why? I mean, we, like, because what's the point of winning six six games or four or three games? You know what's the difference? You want to see what you have. Again, you know, uh, what your your perspective is. You go ask the coach. What the difference is between going two and fourteen and going uh, no, no, going right, six so that's and the ten? The difference is a you, lot. So I'm saying, as a fan, I, I well, always, see, I always see, want but, to but your have. perspective, your perspective is always going to be, oh, tank it and lose and get a higher draft pick as soon as you don't make the playoffs. That can't be their perspective. This is their this is their chosen profession. It makes a big difference to them if they're one and fifteen or six and ten. A big difference. Could be the difference between Sherman keeping his job and losing his job over two years. They need to win games. They need to win games now. That's what he's trying to tell them. Win games. Don't make me make a change. I don't want to even bring up. I want to go in the room on Tuesday or Monday night and and not even have anyone ask me about who's quarterback in next week. I want it to be, you know, 34-10 Giants and let's get on to the next game. And then let's get on to the next game. And then let's get on to the next game. That's what he's hoping for. And why wouldn't he? That's what you'd be hoping for, too. Uh, Wilson and Roxbury. What's up, Wilson? Let me get him up. Go ahead. Hey, hey, listen, Mikey. Uh, so now the writing's on the wall about Derek Carr being going to be traded. And he's not a top 10 quarterback, but he's a top 15 quarterback. He can buy you three or four years. I think the Giants should try to make a pitch to get him. Let Eli finish his career as a starter this year in a dignified manner. Next year, maybe we get Derek Carr with Odell, with Barkley. It's not the end of the world. And and we can put this nightmare chapter, you know, yeah, with Ben well, you fix the. You better fix the. How many games is Derek Carr winning this year? I mean, uh, so wait a second. I got to get rid of Eli, but I want to bring Derek Carr in who's won one game this year. Okay, I got it. <laughs> get the reasoning. So it's not Derek Carr's fault why they're losing. It's Eli's fault why they're losing. 
because Eli's older and Derek Carr isn't. That's how people think. That's how they think. Derek Carr's a top quarterback. Eli's not a top quarterback. Derek Carr's a top quarterback. Derek Carr's won one game. Oh, that's okay. It's okay because he's young. He's in his prime. Eli's old. That's really how people think. Joe in Fresh Meadows. What's up, Joe? Uh, hey, Mike. Um, I just wanted to know, why Why are you so quick to brush aside the, I guess, like the rumblings and somewhat accusations against the, the I, I don't want to say collusion with, with Van Wagen and, and the Mets and Major League Baseball, but mm-hmm. knowing what, what, what we what, know what, 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 history, How does it work? Tell me how it works. Well, I mean, just, just since the Wilpons took over, there's at least half a dozen times where there's been questionable issues with them and Major League Baseball. So give me, when give me, when can you give me give me a couple? I'll tell you I'll tell you all of them. No, well, uh, just when, give me well, give me when one. When Fred and one. Jeff, yeah. Okay, when Fred and you got, Jeff, listen, you uh, have it in for these guys to begin with. But explain I mean, to me how I mean, the collusion Mike, works. Though. Explain they don't to, to, own explain this to me how just, the collusion I'll works. You. I'll, t- I'll tell you how many times it's happened. No, no, no. Just, when, I, listen, when I don't want you to listen. Joe, 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 just tell me how the collusion works. I couldn't listen to you for eight things. I couldn't no, do it. No, okay. I'm not telling you how okay. the collusion works. I'm yeah. just saying no, tell me how it works. I wouldn't poo-poo it. I wouldn't well, brush but, it Joe, so quickly. Joe, would you poo-poo anything that was negative about the owners? I, I'll tell you what, Mike. I know that their history with Major League Baseball and his 50-year friendship with Teelan. How many? Tell me, who do you know in Major League Baseball? I'll tell you what I know. No, no, I know wait, wait, that, I know know that is... Doubleday had an issue with the independent appraiser when he went to sell Double the team Day that was appointed by Major League Baseball. Double Day I know that they looked wait the second. other way wait during Nelson the Madoff Double thing and Double not Day. the Dodgers. Nelson Doubleday right? was an incredibly wealthy man. Why would right. he not contest anything he wanted to contest? Well, he did contest it. They, he filed a lawsuit. So my they, point is, my point is, so wait a second, wait a second. Any, anybody, anybody within the, with a brain okay. is going to try and get the best price they can when they're buying something. I mean, wouldn't you? What about the Dodgers and McCourt? Would you, and the, would and the you, and the would you, or would what you about not? That? Why would did you? he, why did he look the other way with, with, with the Wilpons? Oh, Joe, stop. Joe, Joe, you're so bad. Yeah, listen, Joe. It's weirdos like you that, that, you know, really make people scratch their heads. You wait up night trying to figure out ways to think about how this ownership is doing things that are wrong. I mean, it's unbelievable. Here's what you should be worried about. Do they give me a winning team or not give me a winning team? That's it. What the heck are you worried about what they paid Nelson Doubleday, who is an immensely wealthy man, for his half of the team? And if you... I would think you would say anybody would try to get the price as low as they possibly could. Isn't that your job? When you go buy a house, do you try to pay as much for it as you can or as little for it as you can? I guess you try to pay as much as you can just to be admirable. You know, listen, I don't care what the appraisers. is. I think this house is worth at least $4 million more than you're asking for. It's is, it is $10 million. I know you're only asking for is ten. I mean, give me a break. Here's the bottom line. Do they give you a winning product or do they not? That's all you should be worried about. That's it. That's all. And they need to do better. Now, are they the worst owners in baseball, or as you would call them or something? No. I mean, they went to the playoffs back-to-back years. How many teams, like, and went to the World Series? They've been to the World Series since, since the Yankees have. It's not like they're always terrible. They're not always terrible. They're sometimes terrible, and they're sometimes laughable. I'll give you all that. But they're not always terrible. There are a lot of franchises worse. Many. But it doesn't mean that they haven't made a lot of mistakes. They have. But they're not always wrong, like you think they are. And do I think there's collusion with them hiring an agent because baseball needed them to basically hire an agent to back off the collusion talk? No, I don't believe that. I'm sorry. That's ridiculous. Because if baseball doesn't pony up this year, you're still going to hear the collusion talk, whether an agent's with the Mets or not. David in Long Island, what's up, David? How are you doing, Mike? Good. I mean, this collusion nonsense, I mean, you got to be kidding me. It's a a waste of everyone's time. Collusion is just a joke. Listen, do do owners collude? 
Absolutely. Do they, I mean, do, they, do they try to control the market? Absolutely. But I mean, do they do it to a level that it's illegal? No. They try to do it as much I, as they possibly can. Everyone was talking about this with Colin Kaepernick, how the owners were colluding to try to keep him out of the It's a waste of everyone's time. I mean, this is what you're busy with. I mean, Cody Van Wagen here, I don't know where the guy's coming from. He has to figure out a way to put a winning product That's on the That's all it is. But That's all it's about. Tim Tebow out there. It sounds like the Mets want to sell more. That, no, that, that, that's a mistake. And that's one thing where he needs to be called on because Tim Tebow, he represents. And to even bring Tim Tebow up in the discussion should incense Mets fans. Tim Tebow is a waste of time. This is not a knock on Tim Tebow. I hope he has a great life. The point is, he's not a baseball player. And even Sandy Alderson called, said that he should be more aligned with the marketing department than the personnel department. So everybody knew what was up. Matt and Rockland, what's up, Matt? Let's get him up here. Go ahead, Matt. No, he's not going up for some reason. I don't there we go, Matt. Mike. What's up, Matt? Go ahead. Hey, Mike. Listen, I thought you were very unfair with the mm-hmm. caller before about the Will Bonds. Well, now, I personally couldn't no, care that less. Guy, that, guy, that guy has come on about 50 times with the same tired stuff. It's just tired. So go ahead. What's the point? I, I know, Mike, but, but, but the Will Bonds, you know, the whole Madoff thing? You know, the Will Ponds were gatekeepers for Madoff. They were deeply involved with Madoff. They were criminally involved with Madoff? They were criminally involved? With Madoff? They were criminally involved? Uh, they were gatekeepers. Wait a second. Much. They were well criminal. Wait, 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 wait. What is not... wait a second? What does right. gatekeepers mean? A gatekeeper means that you couldn't get to Bernie Madoff unless you went through somebody like, uh, like the Wilpons. The like only Wilpons. person, the only way you could get to Bernie Madoff was Fred Wilpon. Not the only, but I mean one that's of the, the, that's one, one of the most of the ridiculous people. statements Mike, that anybody has fact, ever Mike, made. Mike, so wait a second, Matt, fact, Matt, Mike, Matt, 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 Matt. Here, I'm going to give you a chance. Okay? Go ahead. Go ahead. Give my producer your full name and your home phone number, and I will let you come on this air, and you will tell us how the Wilpons were criminally involved with Madoff, and I will allow you to do it on the show when you give I him your home it. phone I, number. I, I, didn't I, think, I, didn't, I thought you'd back off a little bit, Matt. I thought you'd back off a little bit because then you're liable as soon as you do that. I thought you'd back off. Well, come on and call them criminally negligent because you don't know that for one second. What you know is they gave money to Bernie Madoff, a lot. They had some accounts that made money. They had some accounts that lost money. That's my understanding. And when I asked Fred Wilpon to his face about Bernie Madoff, he said to me, I gave those kids, I gave Bernie Madoff my grandkids money. You think I'm giving them my grandkids money, Mike? If I think he's not on a level. Bernie Madoff fooled a lot more people than just Fred Wilpon. A lot more people. He was making Fred Wilpon money. Why would you have turned why would you have turned it down? You would have said, Hey Bernie, I think this money's illegal. I'm sure you would have. I mean, come on. Hey, so Ber- so you're telling me Bernie told Fred, Fred, listen, this is how I do it? Yeah, he told a lot of people. His own sons didn't know. One's dead, and one died of a disease, and one committed suicide, and they didn't even know and what Fred knew. And you guys just never stop. I mean, it's hilarious. Fred knew, but the kids didn't know. Matt and Comac, what's up, Matt? Mike, I got to change the, the subject here, okay. please. Go ahead. The Alabama quarterback, what's the deal, Mike? Can he come out this year, or is there a stipulation? He can't without suing. I don't know that he wants to get wrapped up in that. I I, I don't know. You still have to go back into the law. Because when Claret did it, what we were left with was a confusing decision. So Mm -hmm. we, because it was not clear exactly what he had attacked and what was legal and what was illegal, uh, did he attack the Sherman Act? Did he not? Was it a rule that was on the books or was it a uh, made by the Players Association? So we were left with a lot of confusing answers. So we don't right. know. We think it would be struck down, but not without him filing a lawsuit. And I don't know that he wants to go there. So I don't think he'll come out. 
I think he'll wait a year and go back to college for another year before he comes out. But he'll be the first player picked whenever he comes out. That's a fact. I know if you're a Giant fan, you want him out this year so that you can get your hands on him. Uh, but I would think he probably doesn't want to get mixed up in that stuff because I would think that they would still make him go through the channels legally. They wouldn't back off. I think they'd make him go through legal channels to attack it. And, again, it's going to take a while. So I, I don't know that that makes sense for him. I really don't. EJ in Allentown? What's up, EJ? Hey, Mike, I know you just cut that guy short about the Will Pond. Wait, whoa, 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 wait a second. Cut him short. Wait wait a second. I cut him short. I told him if he gave his full name, he could make his declaration of how they were criminally negligent. He, he ran off the air in two seconds. He got he hung up. What do you mean we we'll cut him short? Your defense, your defense. I'm was, not defending him. You can't tell me they were criminal. You don't Mike, know that. First, Mike, Mike, can I make my point? Can well, I make wait my a point? second. That was his point. The guy never. The guy didn't. Need, the guy never used the word criminal. You did. Secondly, he your did. Defense. Let me finish, Mike. Your defense was you interviewed. You talked to Fred personally, and he guaranteed it. Just like A Rod guaranteed for an hour. Well, wait a second. I never I said, wait a second. That he didn't but, do I any never, but I never said A Rod not one time. You find well, a piece on, of Mike. you find a piece Mike, of you you're, you're taking you're AJ, taking Will you Pond's find a piece of tape. Just like you took find one like piece you. of tape where I ever said ever and I'll never work on the station again that I said A that I said A Rod was innocent. I never said one time I knew whether he did drugs or not. How the hell would I know? I asked him the question 50 different ways, which is what my job is. What I said was baseball went out of its way to get A-Rod. That's all I said. They even broke laws to get him because they wanted a big fish to try to make it look like they were cleansing themselves from what they were involved in, which was looking the other way when this whole thing got underway. And Bud wanted to change history once he got jumped in Congress. He wanted to change it. No longer did he want to be a front man for this thing. He wanted to get away from it. And the way to do it was go after A-Rod. And they went after him more than they went after anybody else. Leaked stuff about him. Paid for, paid for stolen evidence in cash. Went and got cash to do it. That was what I complained about. Not one time did I ever say that A-Rod ever didn't do steroids. Not one time. I wouldn't have any idea, nor would you, what player would ever do steroids. What I did was I gave everyone the chance to come on, and I asked him 20 times and said, this is going to stay with you forever, this piece of tape. He answered the question. That was up to him and the audience. I was the conduit. That's my job. I not one time ever said he was innocent. Never. Nor would I ever say anybody was innocent of doing drugs. How would I know? I would never know if a player did drugs or not. How the heck would I ever know? How would you know? How would I know? If a guy fails tests, test, he's, he's guilty. Remember, that time, he hadn't failed the test. They went out and got other evidence. I never once said he was innocent. I expect most of the time, when you hear anything about any of these players, you think they're guilty. But you've got to prove it. And the same thing with the Wilpons. If you're going to make accusations about them and, the, and Bernie May, you want to call them bad owners. You want to say they don't spend money. You want to say they're incompetent. Be my guest. You have every right to make that statement. You don't have a right to call them criminals. You don't have any evidence. And if you do, here's what you do. Come on the show. Give me your name, who you are, where you live. I'll take your phone number, and you can present your criminal evidence right on the show. You got an open, open forum. Otherwise, don't come on my show and call them criminals because you don't know that they are. And I never said, I said what Fred's answer to me was. I never said that vindicated Fred. I don't think there was any evidence that Fred ever knew anything. Just like his own sons didn't know. What we knew is he put a lot of money with the Madoffs, which we knew. No one ever, dis- no one ever disputed that. A lot of money. Money that he made money on and money that he lost money on. He had multiple accounts. But don't come on and call him a criminal. He deserves better than that. You want to call him, uh, you get on him as an owner? You have every right. You want to get on him on this show for criminal actions? Then state your, you got to state your name and give me evidence. 
Otherwise, keep it because you don't have a right to do that. One thing's fair, one thing's unfair. Calling them criminally negligent is nonsense. You have no proof of that. None. And why would Fred know and his own kids didn't know? And I think you've all seen now that his own kids didn't know. Now, they should have been a little suspicious. But a lot of times, we don't get on people for being suspicious when things are right under their nose all the time. Happens in life every day. But being dumb or not paying attention is not a crime. Back after this.